Hello again and welcome to aquaponics in Arizona. This is my second in video. I've got some plants in now. Didn't plant very many, just a few to get the system underway. I don't have any fish. I've added uh, seaweed extract to provide nutrients for the plants until the plants until the system stabilizes. My last video, uh, I had some questions come in about my bell siphon system and how it works and how I'm able to connect, get a consistent uh, siphon and, and uh, flow in the uh, 15 minute water cycle. So I thought I'd go over what I did. My standpipe has a little extra fitting over the top. And if you see, the water's flowing over the top of that and creating a venturi system, which accelerates the water as it goes down the standpipe. How I achieved that is by using a piece like this. It's two pieces threaded together. One piece goes over the standpipe. The other piece has a nice smooth edge on the inside. And what that does is the water goes in, reduces, accelerates, and starts pulling more water in with it. It's called a Venturi system. So what you have to do is you have to add your height, overall height, with this piece in. So you have to cut your standpipe accordingly. The next thing I used is a bell siphon with teeth and slits. The reason I use the teeth and the slits is because I'm using an IBC tote that's turned upside down. The standpipe is uh, inserted through the cap of the IBC. So it sits about an inch or so below the grade of the IBC. So I cut the teeth to bring it up to the, the grade of the IBC and then I want a couple inches of water left in the system so that's where I cut the slits. If you notice I inserted a black tube that will help break the, uh, the siphon when the water gets down to that level. When I inserted this tube I, I drilled it at an angle so that it doesn't create a pinch in the tube. I also used an epoxy glue instead of zip ties uh, so that it didn't kink or pinch or crimp the tube. I wanted full airflow through that tube. I used a black tube so that when sunlight gets in there it doesn't create algae growth inside the tube or inside the bell siphon and keeps it clean so that I don't get any air restriction. If you notice that tube is cut about a quarter of an inch above the top slit. That allows for the air to go in above the water into that tube and break that lock. Some people may be having problems either getting their system started siphoning or getting their system to shut off. To get it started, I highly recommend using that Venturi system along with a 90 degree elbow at the bottom. The longer that standpipe is, the more that water accelerates and you have to slow it down. The 90 degree elbow at the bottom will enable you to do that. If your system's not shutting off like it should, you may need to either insert a tube if you haven't, cut that tube about a quarter of an inch above that slit, or you need to make sure that the tube is a proper height above the standpipe. The proper height should be where the bottom of this tube, this cap, meets the top of where your standpipe would be. If your tube sits down like that on top of your standpipe, there's not enough air in there to be able to break that siphon and your siphon is going to continue to cycle. So one of the two things you can do, you can well, several things, you can cut your standpipe, but that's going to lower your water level in your tank. I don't recommend that. You can make a new bell siphon, if you'd like, and make it a little bit longer so that you're achieving that distance right there. Or you could take a piece of scrap, cut it the length that you need to be able to raise that. So if your system was sitting down here and you needed to, to raise it up an inch or so, you could cut a piece, glue it onto the bottom, just like that, and raise that whole bell siphon up. To give you the proper distance. When I put this on, I'll show you, it'll take probably three to five seconds and you'll start to see the uh, bell siphon agitate and the siphon will start.
and there it goes. Just that quick. So if we look down underneath, you can see that we got full water flow coming out. I used a 90 degree elbow that slows that water down, creates a backflow, starts to siphon. I've got a tube on the end of that elbow. That tube link primarily is to get it over the edge of the, uh, the sump tank and into the end of the sump tank so water's not dripping out. If you notice that tube is much longer than that tube. I've played around with the links of the tube to be able to get them to cycle. The longer the tube, the more that water stays in that tube, the slower it stays and uh, it helps with the start of the cycle but it tends to prevent it from wanting to break. So this one will surge a few times before it breaks whereas this one will break rather quickly. In overview, the things that are going to affect the start and stop of your siphon obviously is going to be the height of your standpipe the height of your bell siphon, whether you have a uh, brake tube coming out of the side, whether you're using a 45 degree elbow or a 90 degree elbow, and how long this tube coming out actually is. You're going to need to play around with that to uh, get it to achieve what you want. All three of my, two, uh, my uh, grow beds take 10 minutes to fill and they take exactly 5 minutes to drain. So I was able to uh, be able to manipulate things to achieve the effect that I need to get the siphon to start and stop. I hope this answers a lot of questions. And uh, if you're building a system, just keep playing with it until you get it the way you want it, and you'll have good, uh, good uh, results. Thanks for watching, and as the system progresses, I'll throw another video in. Have a great day.